Okay, we are here with Meg and we're in the lumbar traction position because Meg has got a disc bulge. And today I'm going to show you what we're doing sort of in the first week of an acute disc bulge. And Meg's an interesting case because she has had this for a while, she's had it ongoing uh, on and off, and then she's had an acute flare up of this disc problem. So we're calling this a, it's like a, not a new injury, but a, a new flare up. And that's why we're sort of going back to what we call week one almost of a disc rehab and treatment. So we're in lumbar traction at the moment. So at the moment what I'm doing is I'm just gapping her in her lumbar spine, which she finds rather relieving. The interesting thing about Meg's one is she's got a disc bulge at L4, L5. So where the disc is sitting between the L4 vertebrae and the L5 vertebrae, it's bulged out the back and to the left. Okay, so her disc bulge is bulged or prolapsed out to the left and it's touching the L5 nerve root. So if you imagine like you've got a concrete block and a car tire and a concrete block and that car tire has bulged out to one side, the wall's torn a little bit, it's a little bit weakened and it's sort of bulging out. So when she weight bears it bulges even further, when she bends forward it bulges even further and it's bulging out where the spinal cord comes down the nerve roots come out at L5 nerve it's gone and touched it, and that's giving her sciatica. Now, her sciatica in this case is pain basically around the piriformis and the buttock. And before, she was getting a lot of relief from getting a trigger point ball in the piriformis, and it felt like there was a really tight hip, um, and getting that released off, and she had no back pain. And sometimes, having no back pain, I'll just give her a bit of a breather here, you okay? Yeah. Having no back pain and having leg pain is a worse sign. So it usually means that the disc is bulged and the disc is not sore anymore. It's bulged out and the pain is coming from the fact that it's touching the nerve and the pain is traveling down the nerve and she felt it from her buttock. Now, then it progressed to, okay, it's down my leg. At L5 nerve, if you think, it's coming down here. Okay, so that's the symptoms are down the back. Usually L4 is sort of down maybe the front of the shin, L3 to the knee, L5 is usually going to be down the back. So it's that classic sort of pain in the buttock down through the hamstring and a little bit down the calf and she's got all of that. So it comes and goes, which is good. You know, we want, we don't want sciatic pain all the way down the leg all the time. We want it kind of going, we want to be able to abate it and get rid of it. How's that feel? You okay? Yeah, it's good. Is that calf? Yes. Yeah. So she's getting sort of calf symptoms. Now, we're doing some traction to try and alleviate the pressure away from the nerve. Now, the disc is still going to be touching the nerve, but inside the disc, okay, the pressure's banked up. You imagine like if it's flattened, if it's bulged out to one side, there's a lot of fluid moved into that sort of back quadrant, and we need to try and gap it to try and alleviate some of that pressure that's sitting in the back of the bulge that's touching the nerve. Um, and this will hopefully give it a little bit of mobilization through the nerve and get in moving. It's one of the things we use to relieve symptoms. Now, Meg at home can use this, she can put a big power band on here and strap it around to like a table or something that's not going to move and she can creep backwards and give herself some traction. So it's a very good thing to do at home to try and alleviate the pain. It's not going to completely fix the disc problem, it's just alleviating it. So then she can do other exercises which are corrected, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and the other thing about Meg is she's gone for a cortisone injection. So she had a corticosteroid and analgesic injection into around the disc where the, where the disc is touching the nerve. She's had an injection around there to try and control inflammation from the fact that it's been pushing on aggravating the nerve, which has helped out a lot, right? And that was two days ago. Yeah. Um, and that's basically dropped the sharp, nasty side of pain down to a sort of a dull pain and taken some of it was quite numb afterwards, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, when we tested her in slump, which I'll show you in a minute, it actually brought back some back pain, which is great. Because if we, it sounds terrible about right, his back pain, but if we can get pain out of her leg and into her back, it means it's centralized. So it's a little bit more in the center and a lot easier to treat and a lot easier to deal with and a lot easier to, for her to deal with as well. Okay? So there's a bit of relief. Now we want to, you know, in this acute sort of phase where she's pretty sore, we can't jump up and down her too much. We can't get her doing too many things. And I'll show you the wall one in a minute. But what I get you to do, and I want get you people to do with this problem, is another relieving one, and a, sort of like a fix if you like, is moving her into rotation 
So she can move pretty well into rotation, which is great. To the side of the pain. Most of the time, it's to the side of the pain. Okay? So what we're doing, you okay? Yeah. Now, what do you feel there? A bit of hip pain. What's the leg? What's the calf doing? Nothing. Gone. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Good result. So if you think, okay, calf gone, where's it gone? Back to the hip. Okay, great. So that's what we call centralization. I mean, it's a theory, but it's working for her. Now, left rotation, what that does is we're creating a little bit of like torque in the lumbar spine. So we're rotating one way. One's the area stays down, we're rotating the other. And when you create torque like that or twist the spine like that, inside you're generating like a centrifuge. So disc material is very thick, very slow moving. But what will happen is it'll slowly migrate it away from the left side back towards the center just from the forces of nature doing this. And that's what we want. We want it away from that left hand side to abate away from that disc bulge. And usually it switches people's pain off. Okay, so they've got acute lumbar pain. Well, she doesn't because her problem is this disc is bulged out, it's hitting the nerve, the nerve's sending pain down, not um, an acute disc problem. So like some people come in here and they've got an acute disc pain and the pain is just in the back because they've just bulged the disc or they've just torn the disc wall and that's what hurts so much, that's what's inflamed, it's not touching the nerve. Whereas hers, she did that a long time ago and now hers is now touching the nerve. So the disc is less sore and healed up so she doesn't get pain from that. We're trying to use this to try and move disc material away so it pulls off some of the pressure on that nerve and give her some relief, let those muscles calm down so she can get better. Okay with that? So I do about a one to two minutes of that and she can do that at home, rotating over to that same side. Now, let's have a look at a straight leg raise. This is really interesting. So a straight leg raise test is to see how much nerve entrapment she's got. So her pain was down the left hand side. If you look at her right leg, and sometimes you can get pain on the left from the right. Let's have a look. Tell me what you feel this week. She's got 90 degrees, she's a bit tight because hey, her back's sore, right? Well, she's got a disc problem. Normal females should get above 90 degrees, males should get to 90 degrees. So we'll call that normal for her. You watch your left side. Tell me when this comes on. Yeah. Okay, so she's sitting about 30 degrees. And where's that, where do you feel that? Yeah. That's the hip pain? Yeah. If I take you further neck, what happens? That's more. Anything else? It's deeper hip pain. Okay, good. So no calf, which is great, which is all one. Yeah. And she's really fighting me there. It's almost like I'm trying to, I liken it to trying to take a, if you've got a, if you're gardening and you're hosing and the hose is coming around the side of the building and it's got stuck, it, that's what it feels like. It's you're tugging it and it just won't come. So what we've got to try and do is try and free that up by doing some flossing. So we're actually flossing the nerve. This is a great neural mobilization. And what we're going to try and do is drag that nerve through her tissues, now I'll look at where she doesn't want me to go any further, being very careful that we don't irritate it. And again, there's another homework one. So all these things that I'm doing, I want Meg doing at home. So outside the physical link, she needs to be doing homework to try and relieve her symptoms, but also improve her mobility through the nerve, get this disc problem better, let her back calm down. So we're trying to drag that nerve and improve it. We can't stretch your nerve. You can't stretch your nerve. It doesn't go longer. All right, a nerve is a nerve. You can improve the mobility. At the moment, it's stuck. Okay, and some of the stuckness, excuse my English, is the fact that it's, you know a nerve is press, a disc is pressing on it. The other stuckness is the body's holding onto it. So the body doesn't want me doing this because it knows it's going to hurt. So you get tightening through the hamstring and the hip to try and prevent that. And that's some of the times that why the piriformis gets so tight and horrible is it's just holding on. And so that's when you when you release it, when you dig your elbow into it, it releases it off. So her using a trigger point ball at home in the buttock, it's really good. Her doing some neural flossing like this, it's gonna be really good. And what I'll get her doing is just doing the knee flossing first. If you look at the knee flossing video, not using the band, the band will be later when she's a bit better. We use other tests as well, like slumps and all those things. Okay, let that relax again. Let that come up. 
Hey, got another two five degrees there. Where's that? Yep. yep. It's the same sort of thing. So we need to get him working on that. We also need to stretch your glutes up. But again, when you start winding up a nerve, and you try and stretch your glutes out, sometimes they don't like it. What do you feel? Where do you feel that? Yep, and back a little bit. Okay, it's a bit of back pain, which is she doesn't like it. But I'd rather have back pain than hip pain. Any calf? No. The calf's gone away. Now, we had calf pain before, so maybe that's eased up a bit, which is great. She's got to be careful how much she loads it up. And she may find that stretching her glute out is just too much wind up for her, and she may not like that. But it's something she needs to try. Okay, have a stand again. Wait a second, Nick. I just want to show you the slump test, and I want to show you the, the side glide. So just go into a slump for me, Nick. So with a slump, this is simply a test. We use it as a tool later. But for her, we're not going to use it as a tool because it's too provocative, it's too full on. So try and slump for me when you feel that. Back. Okay. So let's bring on a back pain, which is sort of, you know, imagine when she comes over, kind of thing. when she goes into flexion, she's bulging. This is why sitting's so bad. When she sits flexed, it bulges the disc, touches the nerve root, pain. Okay. Now she's getting pain directly at the source, which is great, better than being down a leg. But let's try you going down and then trying to straighten your left leg. What happens then? Calf. Calf, okay. So she's getting a bit of calf pain. What about the right one? Fine. That's fine. And that's what we want to improve. We want to see her testing is can she slump? Can she get in the end? She's not even dropping her head yet, so she's a long way of getting right, but we'll get there. Come up into her uh, straight legs. Now, side gliding. This is again, she's got a lateral disc bulge. So you come this way, facing, facing me, facing me. If you imagine her disc bulge is on the left hand side. Now, if it's bulging on the left, now with this exercise, we're not going to push the bulge in, but we're going to try and reduce the pressure inside the disc, get it away from the, the right wall so she can bend over a little bit further. If you lean on that. Now, this is called side gliding and standing. What we're trying to do is get her side gliding, so if you just go into the wall for and she goes into where the pain is. Now, again, this is weight bearing. So a disc that's bulged out may not like this too much. Okay, she may not like this, but she's got to try and attend it. And every day trying to get it, see if she can keep working on it. Because she's got to get her side bending better and get that movement better to reduce the disc pressure, get the pain away from that nerve and get herself better. But if this makes the calf worse, then she's going to stop and do something else then come back to it. The carpet, yeah. <laughs> and this is where we've got to be very careful that we don't push it too hard and make sure it you know, doesn't aggravate it. Um, but it is something we have to get better. Okay, last one, go on to your front. The gold sort of standard exercise, if you like, is the Kenzie extension. So, yeah, jump in front. So, the Kenzie extension is a you know, number one for disc rehab. It is the most important exercise. It's one she's going to be doing a lot. But it's very, very effective where you've got a central disc bulge because you just push it backwards and you push the, the fluid back to the front and happy days. She's got a lateral disc bulge or posterior lateral disc bulge, which means when she pushes up, sometimes if the bulge is so big, she won't be able to go backwards or it doesn't affect them. That's why she has to do so much rotation work and traction work and side gliding work to get a little bit more even, almost centralized, and then she can extend. But in some people, it works just as much as when they've got a central disc bulge. So try and push up backwards for me then. So when she pushes up, she's got to relax here and let that whole back relax and go to the pain and then back down. Go and go through the pain, just going up to the pain. Where do you feel that knee? Down the side of my leg. Okay, so it's down here, coming yep. up. You feel on the left? Yeah, maybe when I'm moving. So she fell on the way through, but not on the way up. And that's okay, going through it and getting to the top, that's great. But you can see, well, I know she's lost some range because I've seen it before. She's lost quite a bit of curve in here, where she just, the body is not letting her go that far. We need to get that better in time. And so, just have a rest for a sec. With Meg, we'll be doing some mobilization to try and slowly get that level extending. And you'll find, like on her L5, she feels that, is that going down your leg? Yeah. So she gets a little bit down her leg. Now that's okay, because we need to get her extending, we just don't hammer her. 
and other things we do is soft tissue release and all that sort of thing. But trying to get her slowly extending of the joint, which when I do this, again, I'm mechanically, what we could do, a PA, we're mechanically trying to reduce pressure inside the disc and get her lumbar segments extending so she can keep her pain at bay. So little homework things for this is, you know, you can't sit for too long, you've got to break up your sitting. Um, again, some people can't stand for too long either. Um, walking is a lot better than, you know, sitting on a bike at this stage because they'll usually be in a bit of flexion. Um, cross trainers are probably a better option than walking because it's less impact, as long as you stay out nice and upright. Um, and definitely no running. So she'll be doing all these exercises, trying to get a little bit of exercise in, just that mobility and that movement will help her a lot just in general, and then she needs to be doing some very low level core rehab as well. So she'll be doing some TA activation, some multivitous work, and starting off in a very low level core rehab like Pilates rehab. Um, you need to look at those exercises, check out our um, other YouTubes on those ones because they're really good. So hopefully that's given you a bit of insight into disc problem and what you need to do week one. And, um, We'll see you at week two.